Hey tubers, it's Tony and today I'm going to show you how to replace a bad turn signal switch in your 2004 GMC Envoy. For whatever reason your turn signal switch no longer works, I'm going to show you how to replace that. You'll need a couple of tools to do this job successfully. You'll need a set of door panel trim tools you can find at Harbor Freight. You'll need a one quarter inch ratchet and a seven millimeter socket, one quarter inch. You need a one quarter inch driver. You need a one quarter inch swivel and a T20 star bit. Okay. Occasionally, a flat blade screwdriver comes in handy. I want you guys to keep in mind that everything you're going to take apart in this video goes back together in the reverse order that you will use to take it apart. If you're not familiar with what you're doing, make a video snap photographs in the event that you should have questions you can reflect back to your video or your photographs to make corrections on this vehicle i didn't see any bolts on the bottom that i needed to remove so you may want to check um, on your vehicle but in this case this vehicle didn't have any i want you to also note that i've already taken certain things apart to save time in this video one of the first things you will need to remember is that this is the steering column lever that allows you to lower and raise the steering column. You will periodically need to do that to remove the top cover and the bottom cover, so keep that in mind. You will also have to remove this lever to get the bottom cover off also. Sometimes you can just grab this by hand firmly and pull it off. If you can't, take like your trim tool put it up in there and you'll be able to break it free okay to start this job guys when you get in the vehicle you're going to notice this little cover down here that's retained by two seven millimeter bolts one here one there break those two free and then you have four more seven millimeter bolts that you need to take loose one there one down there one there and one up there. Break those four bolts loose and place the cover to the side. Okay guys, now that I've removed that cover and placed it to the side, I say again, everything you take apart goes back together in the reverse order that you will use to take it apart. The next thing you'll need to do guys is separate the top cover from the bottom cover. And this will work best when you lower the steering column all the way down as far as it can go. So now that I've lowered the steering column as far as it can go in the downward position, the next thing you want to do is take your trim tool and start to break loose the seam. Just wedge it in there, but you want to do it from like right up in here, guys. Break loose the seam until it comes apart, but don't try and remove it because then you're going to have to go around to the driver's side and do the same thing. Wedge your tool right in here break loose the seam and then you can start the process of removing the top and bottom cover I want you guys to take your time guys take note as to how these things snap into place so that when you go back to reinstall yours you will get it correctly this process is tedious and a pain in the butt but you'll get it okay just take your time so once you remove the top and bottom cover guys and remember to get the bottom cover off you will need to pull that lever out once you get the top and bottom cover off you're going to notice the old turn signal switch it's retained by one t20 bolt right there and then there's another t20 bolt right there how do i get the top bolt out guys it's self-explanatory guys just take your ratchet and your bit reach over lefty loosey righty tighty to remove that bolt how do i get the bottom bolt free guys notice how i have the stern wheel positioned okay so take a good look at that that will allow you access to that bottom bolt so i wanted you to see how i set that up there's my ratchet my one quarter inch driver my swivel and my t20 bit remover okay and that's it guys lefty loosey righty tighty and you'll be able to get that bolt free with that bolt now removed guys go up to the top again lefty loosey righty tighty guys 
start taking that one out. And what will happen is when you remove this bolt, guys, the turn signal will basically just fall out almost, okay? What you're going to notice is there are four electrical connectors that plug into the old turn signal switch, okay? There are three here, and then there's one right there with that blue connect, blue line in it, or blue wire. So you need to disconnect three here and one there. How do you get these electrical connector um, tabs loose? Let me show you that right quick. This is simple, guys. This is simple, guys. You want to take your flat blade screwdriver and put it under that little tab. Push the tab up and then slowly pull away your electrical connector. You want to do that for, for all four of the electrical connectors, including the one back there. Okay, that one comes out the same way as well. Okay, guys, I didn't disconnect the fourth one, but basically you get the gist of how to break loose the electrical connectors. Just be careful, and this will work so much better for you because you won't have a camera in your hand while you're trying to do this. So what you do is you get your new turn signal switch, guys. You plug in all four electrical connectors first. You can't get them wrong because each one is designed to go in a specific connection point. So let's go ahead and hook those back up. So now that you've reconnected your four electrical connectors to your new turn signal switch, it's really simple, guys. You just put your new turn signal switch back into place. And again, I want you to keep note of how the old turn signal switch came out. Um, it's really easy, guys, because you just want to put it back in the way you took it out. Then you put your T20 bit back in here, and then your T20 bit back in down there. So let's do that. Okay guys, I have my bottom T20 bit back in. And remember how I approached it, okay? Use my swivel, my long driver, and that's how I approached it, okay? Just like this, to get it in, take note of how I had the steering wheel turned. That will allow you access to it. And then once you've tightened up that bolt, guys, the only thing that's left is to lower the stern column all the way in the downward position. Put your bottom cover back on. Don't worry, it won't seat correctly at the moment. And then you want to raise the stern column and put your bottom one on. You're going to have to play with this to snap these back into place, guys. I'm not going to do that in this video. Again, take your time. You will eventually get it back in. Once you put the bottom cover and the top cover on, make sure that you put your lever adjuster back in in the end. Put your bottom cover back on with your four 7mm bolts. Then put this bottom cover back on with your two 7mm bolts and you're done, guys. It's just that easy. I hope the video has been helpful, guys. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.